Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode here on Past Easter Skin. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. We have a little news story to talk about today. Um, this is a this is going to be probably rank in there with the WT or WATFs, what or WTAFs, what the actual fuck uh, blogs I kind of do on occasion. Because a news story just passed my desk, my desk, my lap, essentially, while I was actually going through the news stories for this morning. And Atlas have put out a DMCA claim against the creators of the, the PlayStation 3 emulator, which is, uh, what was it actually the name of the emulator? It's uh, the RPCS3. Now, I did not know there was actually an active and functional PS3 emulator that was in use for, on PC currently. I, 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 it, I, I was like of a similar mindset that many people would actually have that the PS3 was one of those consoles that will get an emulation of that at some point in the future, but we're probably not ready for that to be running on our current PCs. But how wrong could I possibly be? Because there is already support for about 300 games out of the 4,000 library of the PlayStation 3. And I didn't follow the creation of this since like 2011, 2012. Well, I suppose with the break crack, the jailbreaking of the PS3, by Geohot a while back, uh, there was a lot of access to the internal gubbins of the machine, giving people a better opportunity to learn how the thing was put together and what the architecture would could be replicated and uh, I suppose retrofitted to work with other PC components. Uh, there was a particular kind of thought going around at one point that the PS3 itself was going to be an extremely difficult console to emulate because of its particularly bizarre architecture with the set certain chips that were actually being used in it, the cell processors, as far as I can remember, they were actually referred to at the time. The ones that you could actually throw into like nukes and missiles and stuff and actually like uh, made it impossible to buy one of these consoles somewhere on the planet. That was that was a thing at one point, by the way. Like there was import bans on PS3s because they could be used for missile components. Whatever you think may be the case. Uh, like, if, if there's if, um, if security threats as high as they were, I'm sure there was actually an absolute real threat that that could actually be a problem. But um, no, that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is that Atlas have actually put out a statement about their regards and what they think about emulation. Now, I'm just going to read from the statement. Have a on it. Um, talk about why I think it's Atlas's re problem rather than actually being Sony's problem <laughs> that there's an emulator that's out and about and actually being financed and prepared by fans via a Patreon. So... You might have heard earlier today that we issued a DMCA takedown notice involving emulation developer group RPCS3 and their Patreon page. Yes, it's true, we settled upon this action for two reasons. We believe that our fans best experience our titles, like Persona 5, on the actual platforms for which they are developed. We don't want their first experiences to be frame rate drops, or crashes, or other issues that can crop up in emulation that we have not personally overseen. We understand that many Persona fans would love to see a PC version, and while we don't have anything to announce today, we are listening. For now, the best way to experience Persona 5 is on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. We appreciate the awareness generated by the emulation community for Persona 5 and know that it's a fantastic example of how much people are loving our game. We want to keep bringing new titles like Persona 5, unfortunately, when our content is illegally circumvented and potentially made available for free in a format we do not think delivers the experience and quality we intend. It undermines our ability to do so by diverting potential support from new audience. We want to continue having a dialogue about where and how you would like to play our games. Please let us know what you think. So Atlas, I'm going to let you know what I think very shortly. I want to just give a little bit of a background explanation as to why, to the audience that are watching this, why the fuck do you care outside of it specifically being Persona 5 that you want to talk about? Why, why take down an emulator that's actually designed for the archival purposes, the historical significance the reclamation uh, digitally of hardware which has been abandoned by its creators. Now, emulation has been a major issue with many companies for a long time. Nintendo are particularly pungent about it, but have turned to actually using emulation themselves on their own consoles to support the, um, the running of their ROMs rather than actually reprogram the ROMs from scratch. Because it makes no sense. If you, get, if you can build a machine that can be the machine, then why not use the machine? There's a reason why. So, yeah, Atlas. I'm sure you're a little bit annoyed with the news stories that went around. Uh, I've got a couple examples of them here. This one's one from PC Gamer talking about Persona 5 playable on PC with this PS3 emulator back in April 03 of this year. 
this was before the launch date for the Western release of Persona 3, was it not? Or sorry, not Persona 3, but Persona 5. Right, so literally, it, the, the game that Atlas were publishing and releasing to the public here uh, with the very long, long time that they actually had and the delays that had regularly kind of occurred to the game's release, uh, people had actually decided that they were going to start playing it beforehand, importing the game. You have no problem with that in any way, shape, or form. You let people import. You're not, you're not, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why importing isn't brilliant for your company, and it doesn't really, it does affect the seals that you're going to have in the end up. But this was fans who wanted to play it. And then part and parcel of that is with, uh, I, don't, I don't think the previous PS3 had any region lock at all, did it? No, it didn't have region lock. So people could play it on their consoles. Some people had actually started, been already been working on the PS3 emulator. And because Persona 5 coming so late in the PS3's life cycle was capable of being run on a fairly stable emulation, which obviously had probably they pushed to kind of like develop up to a level that would run with a game that was actually one of the end line contents for a device like that. Again, what was this other one? Luke Plunkett from Kotaku. Again, it was back in April, April 3rd, April 4th. There's a bunch of articles that all come around from this same period of time that essentially said that more people can play your game. More people can play Persona 5. So you might want to get it out to us as soon as possible. So people might want to be able to play it as soon as possible. Maybe it was a little kick in the ass. Maybe it was a situational kind of thing where you didn't expect it to be run on other hardware. But we're now fast forwarding to September of the same year. And Persona 5 has been out for a period of time. You've uh, made decent sales from the release of the game. And it has predominantly been recognized as a PS4 title. So the PS3 version, which, to be honest, should have been out. You, you can possibly agree that the fact that the Persona, 3, Persona 5 should have been out in the PS3 a lot earlier on. Because it was a PS3 game. But it is considered a PS4 game for the fact that it actually got released during the PS4's release cycle. You want to punish a bunch of developers who have been making an emulation system to run older games on an older, defunct console. Defunct only in the terms, I would say, because it isn't as heavily supported by WIF releases these days. So instead, you DMCA to try and get, down, get their Patreon page taken down and the actual emulator itself. Atlas, we do love the shit out of you. But that's not cool. For the express purpose of protecting your copyright, your IP, you're denying people the ability to actually archive and be able to run digital archives of games that will, and we know this for a fact, eventually fall by the wayside. There's plenty of other developers other than you, Atlas. Plenty of other people who are actually making games that will not be remastering and recreating and re-releasing a Persona 5 Golden just in time for the next uh, cycle of games that you want to be doing. Don't fuck with the people who are willing to put their time and effort into building emulation. There is a massive grey area whenever it comes to emulation. It's a massive grey area whenever it's emulation of stuff that's actually so old that there is physically no hardware for it to be run. But don't force and limit the people who are making the tool. Go after the pirates. Go after the people who are actually using pirated versions of your software. Go after the people who are using the emulated software to run a pirated version, yet still connect to the PSN network, where you can be able to actually tell if they're using a pirated account. You, you, there's a reason why pirated games don't tend to run on official firmware of consoles because people can get caught and they get their accounts banned. Start there. Don't start here. Don't start with the archivists and the librarians. The librarians are there to make sure that everything can be kept in its own fucking shelving system, that it'll always be accessible. They're not the problem. They never will be the problem. The problem is piracy. It's literally the main reason why you're actually pushing forward to the we need to protect ourselves. And the phrasing of that 
we don't want people's first experience of Persona 5 to be a buggy mess or a crash laden or a uh, frame dropping. Nobody is playing Persona 5 for the first time on a buggy emulator. You are a company who makes games that have a very, very specific audience. <laughs> you're not Call of Duty. You're not, um, you're not Battlefield. You're not the mainstream game company. You have always been a very, very well-loved company who bring a lot of stuff that doesn't normally make it to these, make it to these shores, American shores, and many shores other than besides, and have a lot of hotly anticipated games, but will never have an audience who are that adamant that they must get your games for nothing. People have been begging and pulling these copies of games from every single nationality that will actually have an English translation in text, at least. There's a reason why Play Asia as a company exists, and Atlas is a very large portion of that. Don't attack the people who want to give access to your games, and not really thinking about your games specifically, but want to give access to all the games that will eventually fall by the wayside. I, you wanted my opinion? You wanted to hear what I think? That's how I feel. I just don't think that attacking emulation developers, the people who kind of work in the gubbins and design these pieces of software, are the people you should attack. It's an easy target for you because they're public. They have to kind of like make it for people to see it. But they're not the people who are pirating your games. They're never going to be the people who are pirating your games. Because they are the people who put in the most, have probably the most respect for your games. I want to make sure that everybody can see them at some point in their lives. Go after more pirate distros. Go hunt down where sites. Go and find people who are actually making uh, iOS images or making software for ripping from the discs. Those are your targets. Not the emulator, emulation creators. I'm sure there's actually whole sectors of that particular group of people that are probably closer to the black hat than they are a white hat, but not a cool move and something that's probably going to bite you in the ass fairly quickly. I mean, I'm trying to think about how this is actually not going to be seen as a very shitty move, especially in terms of Persona 5 after the streaming issues that were had at the very beginning of its release, which is completely understandable because you didn't want a spoiler showing up. But Atlas, you're abusing, you're, you're not abusing the DMCA because legally you're within your full right to do so as protection of your IP and your copyright. But we really don't need more issues like this expanding within the gaming community. We don't want some of our favorites, some of the people that we do love and care about to actually be doing these things. Because it takes us from the knowledge that you're no longer the, a scrappy company who were trying to kind of like make sure everybody got to see and enjoy and spread games with a profit level that was acceptable. They, you're no longer doing that. You're, you step the line to actually be in the, on the other side of an argument where literally it's like, we own all these and you don't own any of it. And uh, we'll make sure to do that in the terms of service and EULA that you know that you don't own it because it's just a service that we're providing. I'm like, all right, guys, you want to play it that way? All you do is encourage the people who are going to pirate in the first place. Now, here's, here's the end point. The, the end point I'm going to have about this now is I did not know about a PS3 emulator that could run Persona 5 until today. And I keep my hands buried in the gubbins of gaming news. And I actually have been a big fan of emulation in the past just for the util utility that it has uh, for capturing footage and for being able to access information about games and access moments in games that are actually not really easily accessible through any other means. Essentially, the, the debugging that's available from it. I did not know there was a PS3 emulator that could run Persona 5. I'm saying this, repeating this now a number of times. There's a PS3 emulator that can run Persona 5. I'm making a video about the fact that you complained about an emulator that can run Persona 5. Now, how many times am I going to have to keep repeating that there's an emulator that can run Persona 5 that other people who are listening to this video are going to go, holy shit, there's an emulator that can run Persona 5. 
Maybe they might take a look at it now. Welcome to Streisand Effect. Thank you very much for watching, guys. That's all I had to say about the topic, but goddamn. Atlas, we love you, but this was a dumb, dumb move. So um, I'm sure there'll be more people talking about this very soon. I just wanted to get it out of my head because I was, just, I was upset about it. Uh, probably plenty of people are going to say, like, hey, it's a dumbass move to actually be supporting emulation. You know, I think it's a dumbass move to actually attack emulation because you're not going to stop it. You said you're going to discourage people, but you're going to shed a big beacon of light on it. And it might be better off just not to touch the issue at all. And had probably not eat the cost that was going to be causing, but like I said, attack the actual distributors of piracy. That's, that's the emulation is not piracy. Emulation is a tool. The way people do with it, that is the piracy. So chase down those sources and solve that problem. So yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope to actually see you all again very soon. And hopefully this video doesn't get DMCA'd for the content that it contains. <laughs> I'll see all you dudes in the next video. Bye.